Hi. So a couple of things about this video. Number one, if you're gonna watch it, I suggest that you stop right now and go read the poem. It's 14 lines. It's quite short. And I've included links to read the poem and I've also included a link to the video of Jericho Brown reading in video format the poem. Uh, so you have lots of options. Secondly, a little backstory, I guess? So I saw this post online of someone reaching out within like the Asian Creative Network and they were wondering like, hey, I'm an engineering student. I don't really have like the funds or like the time in my course schedule to take like more humanities, but I really want to do better in it. And I sat there and I thought about it for a long time. And then I thought about all of the people in my life who are more like STEM or just like never really got to experience like liberal arts and the humanities for all the great things that it is like maybe they took like high school english and it was a terrible time and they never thought about it again you know and then whoop. so i was curious like if i gave them a piece of text how would they read it versus um how i read it not that like either way is better but I was trying to gauge, you know, like depending on your life experience, depending on what you're trained in or what you know, right? What will we get from the same piece of text? So then I thought, well, in this time of great social distancing, I'm gonna try and mimic a uh, community environment, <laughs> but virtually through text. And my third point is a really, really, really big disclaimer. I hope you read it by now. If not, whoop. It's going to be very obvious that this poem was written by a Black writer, a very good one and very well known in the poetry community. And this poem is about Black lives and I'm not Black. I do not wish to comment on Black lived experiences. I am simply exposing my friends to this poem that they might not have otherwise read or come across. And yeah, I just really like this piece of work and I wanted to talk about it in like an honest way. And I hope that's okay. So like, keep that in mind. Obviously, you should pay black artists. You should listen to black people. You should read black literature um if you're reading or if you bought one of those anti-racism books i highly highly suggest you read the black contemporary literature because i think that'll go a lot further than like a cute little how to not be racist book not that those are bad but you need to diversify your efforts Anyway, let's get into it. This is the poem on the left side, and this is the first response to it from one of my friends. So this person says, I understand the names at the end, but don't understand how they tie to the other italicized words. I do like the heat imagery. Sounds to me like things are hotter, more intense, harder, more grueling. Now, as there's so much work left to do for people of color and that the work of those who came before is both being sped through and then dismissed or destroyed. So that comment came from someone who is a dancer, and this next one comes from one of my climbing friends, and they said, I don't think I fully understand it. It seems to be about the black experience, how the harsh environment they plant in threatens to take everything away. They are still able to grow, but in the end, they are burnt up. This next responder says, From what I understand, this poem highlights the black experience in the U.S. by outlining the struggle or mindset of early black Americans eager to gain or work for equality, meaning land ownership slash freedom, within society. But their efforts are met with resistance or interference in the form of racism or prejudice. It seems when black Americans follow the examples set by others, i.e. white people or philosophers, the rules are different for them. The game is different, but they persist, quote-unquote, against the will of the sun. New generations continue the work to progress the status of black people in this country and find new ways to carve out and occupy space or make their mark on the world. In spite of successes, triumphs, and achievements, i.e. filmed what we planted, new generations of black people fall victim to these same systems of oppression and even new adversaries to the fight towards equality. This seems to be the tradition, hence the title. Here's some cute little takeaways in case you weren't reading or listening. I would say the bit about like the black experience in the US is a good catch because anti-blackness is global but it's important to specify and acknowledge when something is US centric. 
So this part about falling victim to these systems of oppression, I would interrogate the wording of falling victim. So like, what are the meanings behind this? And who is doing what? Because I feel like it's important to make it very, very clear who has a hand in these systems of oppression. But other than that, this was a solid take. So this person took a slightly different approach, which I think is cool. So they said, okay, initial reading, I see that it's about black lives. There are references to people who were enslaved, ancestors who were enslaved. I feel like I know what I want to say, but I don't have words for it. So I'll say words or feelings that come to mind. Sadness, life gone too quick, death, flowers, funerals, black lives filmed being taken one by one. It feels tragic and heavy. So I want to bring attention to the fact that, like, upon initial reading, this person already knows that it's about Black lives. Because one of my friends shared this poem with another friend and... That person couldn't even recognize the names. So, uh... These people exist, um, just one or two degrees of separation away from us. So this next person says, It weaves a timeline from slavery and toil in the dirt to present-day oppression and lack of property. Flowers all have names, likened to people given names. Flowers bloom against the will of the sun like black folks bloom against the will of the oppressors. Also a reference to climate change in that same line. The line about filming I think refers to the tradition of keeping home movies or photo albums, but could be referring to filming police violence too. The narrative fast forwards in the structure too to a bleak future everything cut down, meaning the flowers are black folks by oppression. Climate change is layered in there too, like industry-driven climate change destroys nature and life and also that power lies in the hands of the oppressors. This person also included a list of things they didn't understand, which include elements classical philosophers said could change us, and colors you expect in poems. So literally, black and white, ink and paper? Or vague gesture to vividly describe colors, but there's no point in describing them because it's all dead? So then I asked them, well, what are colors you'd expect when the world ends? And they replied, well, it depends on what end, I guess. The human end? Ash. Smoke. Fire. After that, green and blue for eons and eons until the sun burns everything away for real. So now we're pivoting a little bit, and this next response comes from someone who does study the humanities and liberal arts. What I've gathered from the poem so far is a kind of rush to make something bloom that proves black men were there at all, meaning the line about speeding the video up being a reference to time-lapse nature art. I get the sense of the brothers in the poem making life possible against all odds and through any number of conditions, meaning earth, wind, fire, water, the elements of classical philosophers. The only problem is that the colors don't match up. Because in time-lapse nature videos, the colors remain vibrant, but the poem states they are colors at the end of the world with nothing left, which to me would imply beige and brown and black and gray. I feel like this juxtaposition is purposeful and deeply melancholic because obviously the next line is black men who definitely existed but were struck down too soon by the violence of whiteness. And yet the names of the men are one and the same as flowers growing from dirt they do not own even though they tend to it. It makes me feel a bit anxious. So what are my thoughts about this poem? Uh, well, I think the poem gives you keys to go back and add more layers to the text. So as we got more info, as we like read down the poem, um, things that we had already read began to take on a new and different meaning. So I actually experienced this poem in waves with each iteration slightly different than the one before it. So for example, the part that really got me with this poem was getting to the end of the poem and realizing everything in italics are flowers, and that includes the three names at the end, because I've looked up every one of these words and they're all flowers, and that font change is significant. So if I think about John Crawford, Eric Garner, Mike Brown as flowers too, then some of the meanings change. For example, um, upon first read, I was like, Okay, men like me and my brothers filmed. So instantly you think filming police violence, right? And then the next line, we're like, wait, no. <laughs> filmed what we planted for proof we existed before. Um, so I was like, okay, well, we're talking about planting and there are flowers. So maybe they recorded like, hey, like I planted this plant here, this species was planted here existed before like the flowers bloom so like yeah we filmed us planting these seeds before 
you know, we're long gone and all you, that's left that you can see are the flowers. And then the next line is like, too late. And you're like, oh, what does that mean? Sped the video to see blossoms brought in seconds. What does that mean, right? Um, so this is where it gets interesting because depending on how you read these colors, you would get a different take. So when it says colors you expect in poems where the world ends, like what does Armageddon look like to you? Because for me, it was instantly red. And so when I think of that, okay, colors you expect in poems where the world ends, like it's red, okay? so sped the video to see blossoms brought in seconds blossoms brought in seconds and it's also red so if something is bursting and red um on film and relates to black lives and everything italicized in this poem are flowers and these names bloomed within seconds. Isn't that a beautiful way to describe a devastating thing? So then a line that could have been, well, it's multiple things. A line that could have been time-lapse flowers blooming is now suddenly time-lapse, oh my God, grief. It carries multiple meanings. One of them being like, hey, I planted these flowers. I was here, I did that. And the other one being, I was here. I was alive once. And then I went back into the text with this different, more dangerous meaning, uh, with bloom being the key word. Because upon first read, you know, summer seemed to bloom against the will of the sun, which can mean like flowers continue to grow despite how hot it is, and increasingly so. But if you know anything about civil or urban unrest uh, and riots, they have historically happened in the summer months. In reaction to police brutality, in reaction to the murder of a precious black life. And it's been a pattern, um, like scholars have noted, since like the civil rights era and likely long before it too. So summer is a particularly dangerous time to be black. Um, well, it's a dangerous time to be black all of the time, but for a variety of reasons that I will not go into because I'm not qualified because I don't remember um, them all without having to dig up a lot of notes. Summer, summer is a scary season. So then the line, summer seemed to bloom against the will. It could be the will of all of us. It could be the will of black communities. It could be the will of the sons of dead fathers. Summer and the dangers of summer happen regardless and against the will of lots of people. And this poem was written in 2015, okay? It was five years ago that Jericho Brown said, summer flamed hotter i.e. summer increasingly gets more tense and dangerous. We are now in 2020, even during a pandemic, we have seen exactly what happened this summer. And indeed, it was so hot that internationally, globally, all eyes were on the United States. There's also this lovely cosmos thread going on in the poem uh, because it opens up with the word aster which is a type of flower plant, but also means star, which is a lovely opening and sets up this additional layer of space. Ultimately adding to this poem because now it contains elements of both space and time. The tradition as a title for me is kind of self-explanatory. There's a lot of cyclical stuff that happens um, in regards to black death, in regards to police violence, in regards to racism. It's a tradition because it doesn't stop. But beautifully so, here there is also the tradition of planting because some plants like people only live for one season and must be replanted every year. So planting is a type of tradition. Growing things in the earth is a type of tradition. And so is burial, if this happens every summer. So is burial. And like, I haven't confirmed this because I was not reading poems back in 2015. I was doing other things, but 
this poem, you, you can't ignore the fact that it seems to be in conversation with Ross Gay's A Small Needful Fact. So this response was the only one submitted by a poet, and they said, Like the title suggests, the speaker is reflecting on the past and the urgency of the present. The use of a sonnet further adds to this idea of tradition, as the sonnet is one of the most traditional forms there is. So by employing the form, Jericho is both invoking the past while also recontextualizing the sonnet within contemporary times, a time where violence against black and brown bodies is being spotlighted by the use of cameras. To begin with plants and to say fingers in dirt meant it was our dirt is to begin the poem with a speaker who knows of the work that black bodies have done upon the earth. Here, the bodies toil the earth so much that the body and earth become one. After various more plant names are sprinkled throughout the poem, we reach the final rhyming couplet. At this point, the black bodies are further connected to the earth, as the speaker invokes the names of those who were killed at the hands of the police. The poem makes us question and reflect on the traditions of the past and future, and make us reckon with the contemporary tradition of police brutality and how the earth feels differently to different people. So I wanted to highlight that this comment is referring to the fact that black and brown death at the hands of cops or white people has been happening for a long time, but cameras and phone cameras have made these images more accessible to us. In fact, Emmett Till's death had such an impact because it was one of the first times there were actually photographs published so the whole nation could see. I've included a link so you can read more about this in case you've never heard of Emmett Till, and also so that we can all take note of just how intentional his mom was around the particulars of his funeral. I also think that this part might be in conversation with the comment earlier about earth, water, fire, and air, and being changed by the elements that one toils in. I think my favorite part about creating this video was getting to see everyone's responses interact with and build upon each other's. Lastly, I'd like to leave you with this quote by the author himself about the poem. The poet's relationship to language and form is an addiction where what's past is present, a video on loop. Not watching won't make what that video says about our future go away. By Jericho Brown.